Hey guys, Suze here. Welcome to a special dairy-free edition of our What's For Dinner on Keto, easy keto meals, recipes, video. And this is special request looking at you, Aretha and Nancy. My husband actually picked, cooked, and filmed all these recipes. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please hit that red subscribe button now and let's get into the video. I wanna catch the way. First up, we have these awesome, super easy, spicy tuna rolls. And these look more complicated than they were. So to start with, you just take one medium sized cucumber and you're gonna thinly slice it. You need six thin slices of this cucumber for this recipe. Ideally, you don't wanna use the cucumber slices with the seeds, but this cucumber was out of control with the seeds all in it. So we did use them and it uh, tasted and worked out just fine. But it is to your preference. Of course, this would be easier if you used a mandolin slicer. We don't have one yet, so my husband just used a big kitchen chef knife. Then in a separate dish, he's adding some extra virgin olive oil, yellowfin tuna. Uh, he just used the star kissed package ones. And he is using some Texas Pete hot sauce. You can use whatever kind you like. He's adding a teaspoon of that to the tuna, along with an eighth a teaspoon salt, an eighth a teaspoon pepper, and one sixteenth of a teaspoon, that's half of an eighth teaspoon, guys, of cayenne, and he is mixing that all together. Once you have that mixed, he is going to get an avocado and just slice that in half. And he's gonna go ahead and take one half of the avocado. The separate half we're not using, we will store with the pit in to keep it from browning. That's just a little tip for you guys. And this one, he's just gonna cut into little slices. You could dice it or do it however you like. He just left it in little slices. And then he is putting some of the tuna mixture onto one of the cucumber slices. And after he gets all of those topped with tuna, he just takes a slice of the avocado and sticks it in and rolls it like you would a sushi roll. Um, he rolled these pretty loosely and they still worked fine. So if you rolled them even tighter, it would be even better but they were just great. So after you roll it up, you can just use two toothpicks to secure the ends of it together. And look how cute and adorable that looks. I was really impressed that you picked this recipe and uh, successfully executed it. They almost look like little cucumber flowers. Here they go all plated up. This was such a light, meal, um, super duper, easy, crisp. It's like a salad, but the presentation is even better. Definitely great for a light lunch too. Next up, he made this awesome garlic chicken and zoodle dish. This was super, super simple. Uh, to start with, he took just a couple tablespoons of olive oil, heated those up over medium heat, and to that, the recipe called for four cloves of garlic. I think he added double that amount in pre-minced garlic. Um, and he just sauteed the garlic in the oil and then added two medium chicken breasts chopped up. He did use uh, like pre-cooked frozen chicken breasts. You could use raw. We just used what we had on hand already and he just continued cooking those in the medium heat. Now the recipe does call to add red pepper flakes. He left those out so that it would be super kid friendly, but he did add some salt and pepper to the dish. Now he's taken a bag of steamed zoodles. We always just pre-buy these. Maybe one day we'll make our own, but really it's so easy to just buy them already made. And he's adding that to the dish and cooking it until it's all heated through and mixed up. And you could sprinkle this with cheese if you want, but we're trying to keep it dairy free. So there it is, all plated up. This was a hit with the kids too, as they love anything with chicken in it. Next up, he made this awesome sheet pan steakhouse dinner. And this is a great recipe. We love making steaks. So to start with, he preheated the oven to 425, and then he got some cremini mushrooms. Now, I don't like mushrooms, but my husband is a fan. So uh, he went ahead and got some of those and rinsed and chopped them. Then he also used some whole green beans, and he just chopped those in half. 
and then he is adding all of the veggies to a cookie sheet just lined with some nonstick foil. Now for this recipe, we did use ghee, but ghee, they actually remove the milk proteins um, in the cooking process, but if you didn't wanna use that, you could definitely use olive oil. So he took a fourth a cup of ghee, mixed with some garlic cloves, and just put it over the veggies with salt and pepper, popped them in the oven for 12 minutes. Meanwhile, these nice, awesome thick cut ribeyes, he started seasoning them. We do season both sides of our steaks with salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire does have carbs in them, so you wanna watch that a little. Also, the cremini mushrooms have about half a carb per nice, uh, like medium sized mushroom. So keep that in mind. Obviously you probably know the carb count on green beans. <laughs> so once you pull this out of the oven, he's just making space for the steaks and just kind of nestling those in there with the veggies and putting it under the broiler. We did about eight minutes on each side to achieve a nice medium rare steak. And here it is all plated up. These were spectacular. I mean, every time you make steaks, they're great, but I really loved the way the green beans tasted with the seasoning and then cooked under the broiler as well. Next up and lastly this week, he made these awesome mini bacon wrapped meatloaves. These are great paleo whole 30 keto recipe. So to start with, he took a half of an onion and he just chopped it up finely with three cloves of garlic and a tablespoon of oregano and uh, for some reason, I guess because it looks really cool in the video, he mixed those up on the cookie sheet <laughs> before adding that whole mixture to a giant mixing bowl. And to the mixing bowl and the seasoning mixture, he is adding a pound of ground beef and a pound of spicy Italian sausage. The recipe calls for a half a pound of each, but I'm pretty sure he added a pound each. Maybe not. I'll link the recipe down below. Then he got uh, eight slices of bacon, and after he rolled the meatloaf into these balls, he is just rolling that around each one. He does have the oven preheated to 400 degrees. And after he gets all of these rolled up, we're just sticking them in these silicone muffin pans. I like these because they're deep and super good for cooking things that are not muffins or cupcakes. I will link them down below. Then he just popped the whole thing in the oven for 30 minutes, and this is what it looked like plated up. He did not cook um, a side with this as he meal prepped these, but you could just steam some veggies with them. These were super duper good. The recipe also called for chopped up mushrooms, but he left those out because I don't like them. Anyway, there you go, guys. It's a really, really quick uh, video this week of dairy-free keto recipes. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, make sure you subscribe to our channel, and make sure you stick around for next Sunday's What's for Dinner on Keto Meals idea video. Thanks, guys. Bye.